This is the Misfit Vegan Podcast, episode 431. You never know what you have until you don't have it. I watched my sister go from a healthy, normal kid to being almost 300 pounds in a wheelchair not able to talk or walk or dance or feed herself or go to the bathroom on her own. I watched my sister lose everything. She loved, she loved to make art. I saw her lose the ability because she had a stroke and was paralyzed on her left side. My sister loved to dance. My sister loved to do martial arts. My sister loved to run and bike. My sister loved to play soccer with me. I've seen it with my own eyes. Maybe you have not. But I just want you to imagine a life where you are in prison. I know there's a lot of background noise. I understand. I want you to... um, uh, This is the worst. This is the worst. I'm so sorry. I'm on my bike right now. So I want you to imagine a life where you're in prison and you don't get the opportunity to choose what you eat. Can you imagine that life? I want you to imagine lying in a hospital bed, paralyzed from the neck down. You don't get to choose what you eat. You don't get to make smoothies. You don't get to make salads. You don't get to go to farmer's markets and pick out fresh fruit and veggies. You don't get to. No, no. You have to eat what they give you in a tube. You understand that this is somebody's reality, right? It might not be your reality today, but it could be tomorrow. You could get hit by a car. Something could happen. You have no idea. Something could happen today that puts you in one of these positions tomorrow. You know how many people have gotten arrested unjustly who are in prison and innocent? Do you know? It happens. Yeah. And it could happen to you too. So now, now that you are aware right now that this is possible, I want you to today eat like you know that you have the freedom to eat anything you want. I want you to work out like you are not going to be able to work out again tomorrow. I want you to do a workout today that you might not be able to do tomorrow. Because you might be paralyzed. You see, I saw my sister become a complete victim in her body. But she never, she never played the victim role. In her mind she was not a victim you see she had one hand and one foot and she used it to the best of her ability and every day she woke up and she was happy to be alive how many people with both legs and two arms and a fully functioning brain and a job and a family and money and all these things in a car my sister never got to drive a car that was like one of her dreams and um, That's why I didn't learn to drive until 38 years old because I felt like, who am I to drive? My sister didn't get to drive. I don't want to drive. I don't want to do anything that my sister didn't get to do. I'm sorry about all this background noise. But, um, and that's hard to explain to people. So, like, you know, when people say, what? You've never driven before. It's like, well, I mean, I don't have the capacity and time to explain to everyone that yeah I was feeling guilty my whole life because my sister she never drove you know so I just say that I was afraid to drive which I was because of course everything's hard before you know how to do it now that I drive every day so easy I love driving but I had to acknowledge and accept the fact that I could still love my sister and drive I could still love my mom and move out of our house at 35 
I could still say goodbye to someone who is toxic and love them. You can still love someone and say goodbye. I know that sounds crazy because a lot of us think that if we love someone, we have to suffer. We have to stick with them and stick by them. And we don't. We don't have to um, hurt ourselves to love someone else because love doesn't hurt. Remember, I said it the other day. Someone who doesn't know how to love hurt you. Love never hurts you. Ever. 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 Yeah, love isn't perfect. Love makes mistakes, but love doesn't hurt you on purpose. You see, when somebody is cheating on you, they don't love you. They don't. They don't. They might say they do, but you see, what somebody says doesn't mean much. Oh, thank you so much. What someone says, thank you. And what someone does are two different things. If somebody loves you, they prove it with their actions. Words are who you want to be. Actions are who you are. If somebody is is always late to meet you, they don't respect you. They don't respect you. They don't respect themselves or their own time, so they're not respecting your time. So anyway, um, that's it. I think that's the podcast. Uh, I just I just wanted to say that a lot of us are taking for granted our bodies and our abilities to choose what we get to eat and what we get to do today. And I want you to please think about it in a different way. You get to eat healthy. You don't have to. You definitely don't have to lose weight. You don't have to exercise. You don't have to eat healthy. You get the opportunity to. And you better take advantage of it. Because what you don't use, you lose. You might lose the ability and opportunity to get to choose healthy food. You know how many homeless people wish they had your life, wish they had your bank account, wish they had your job and your ability to be healthy? Put yourself in someone else's position and you'll be much more likely to see how goddamn blessed you are. The one thing I cannot stand are victims. I can't stand them because I saw my sister and if she wasn't a victim then I don't know who has the right to be a victim and I'm just you know I'm sad she's not here but I'm grateful she's not here and it's a very strange dichotomy because I miss her so much but I hated her being alive. I hated her suffering, even though she didn't feel like she was suffering, but I had, I watched her suffer in the hospital. I watched her, you know, have like 50 or more seizures a day. I watched her, you know, have to be rushed to the hospital constantly because if she was having seizures, um, she wouldn't be able to take her medication. She was throwing up and she was seizing and then she would have more seizures because she couldn't take her medication and, you know, then She's going into a really, really dangerous state. Um, She was surviving on medication for 35 years. Yeah. And unfortunately, without it, she was, that was honestly keeping her alive. So um, it was interesting because, you know, I'm very against medication, right? Obviously, prescription pills and all that stuff. But um, when I look back at it, you know, when my sister wasn't taking seizure medication, she was not able to live. She was in the ICU, you know, when she couldn't, like they had to put it into her veins when she couldn't swallow it because of all the seizures. Um, So it was interesting, it was interesting to watch that, to see her being kept alive, but barely on medication. So I guess there is a time and place for medication, but um, she didn't have much of a quality of life. So I don't know if that, you know, should have ever been happening. I just share this with you to hopefully, hopefully inspire you to take care of yourself, boo. You get to. You get to.